Hey everyone, it's Sanati, your friendly gate agent here. So today's video, I will be answering a question left by Cam and Dre, and they asked if I could do a video about the hiring process and if I can give any tips. So that's what I'll be addressing today. So if you are interested in applying for a customer service position, working for an airline, please continue watching because this will be very helpful. These are tips that I used myself and it helped me get to where I am today working for a major US airline that I love. So first and foremost, I think the one thing I should address is appearance. For my face-to-face -face interview, I had a pencil skirt and I had a collar t-shirt, very professional, and I tucked it in. I had some heels on. That's probably the only time I've ever worn heels to work. I, I, I can't walk in heels, so that's why I don't wear it at work. I, I made myself look presentable. I had my hair down. You really should have your hair up, but personally for me, I, I curled it so I looked really cute in it. If you're applying for customer service, look the part just as you would if you were applying to be a flight attendant. Just make sure you look your best. That's all I'm trying to say. Look your best. Make sure you feel comfortable in what you're wearing because that's key. You want to be comfortable but also look well put. You represent the company that you work for that you're going to be hired working for. So make sure to put your best foot forward. That's what I meant to say. The next tip is to smile. Show those nice pearly whites. Make sure the interviewer knows that you can smile. <laughs> Smiling is a big part of the job. You're in front of people. When you smile, it shows that you're kind, you're friendly, you're inviting. So smile when you go in for your interview. That is what I did. Um, I smiled almost the entire time I was being interviewed. Even my interviewer asked me, are you sure you're not interviewing for Miss America? <laughs> I'm like, no. I'm like, thank you though, I'll take that as a compliment. So make sure to smile, that's that's my main thing. Another tip, make sure to do some research. Do some research on the company that you are planning to work for. Make sure that your morals are aligned with the morals of the company. And I also like to look into the routes that, you know, that specific company flies to. So the airline that I personally work for, we fly pretty much everywhere. It also helps when you're being interviewed because you can kind of throw in the knowledge that you've done your research. Make sure it's the company you would want to work for that you would be proud to represent. Another thing is experience. So my very first job I actually worked with an airline. It was actually a third party. That's where I got my first experience. That's where I got my first taste of the aviation life. If you get hired as a subcontractor like I did when I first graduated from high school, you know, don't don't brush it off, you know, take it. That's that's your one foot in the door. So take every opportunity as a major opportunity. Don't think you're too good for something, you know. People tend to kind of overlook things because they aren't what they want it to be. Experience is what is going to put your resume ahead of others when potential employers are looking through for candidates that they think are qualified for the job. Bloom where you're planted is what I'm trying to say. So the questions that they ask that, um, I personally hate it's when it's those scenario questions they're going to give you situations and they just want to see how you would react to it I've been in these situations when I got hired so it really helped me because I kind of knew what to expect funny thing is actually um, I went to an interview with Alaska Airlines before I got hired with my airline they start with a big group interview and then you finally go on to one-on-one -on -one if you get past that stage and I went to one-on-one -on -one interview and they asked me one question it just happened to be the very last question and I just stared at them I was just like can you give me an example but don't ever ask the interviewer can you give me an example yeah learn from me learn from me. just make sure to practice ahead of time vocalizing what you're going to say it really helps it makes a huge difference the airline that I currently work for I applied in July and I didn't hear anything from them so that's when I just kept applying for other airlines I kept getting rejected November is when I finally got a call back finally went to the interview I aced that interview and I got hired it took five months a total of five months from actually applying to getting hired and then on top of that it took another month because what happens when you work for an airline 
while you have to do all these background clearances. I skipped a final. I skipped a final to go to my training. That's how, that's how much I wanted to work for this airline. I ended up getting a C in that class. A C. That's the only C on my um, transcript from my university. I graduated with honors still. But yeah, so it's a long process. So you know what? Don't give up. Especially if you want to work for a specific airline. When the time comes, you will get hired. So don't give up. So what I did personally, I religiously checked every airline to see if they were hiring. You'd like to apply for Southwest job, but you don't know how to check if they're hiring. So you just go to www.southwest.com slash careers. You just put the airline slash careers. I applied for a position in, I think it was Chicago. I don't even live in Chicago and I applied for it. That's how desperate I wanted to work for an airline. So I checked every airline. I had a phone interview with Virgin. I obviously didn't pass that. <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't. I couldn't even pass the survey. That's what happened. I didn't pass the survey. Uh, Southwest, uh, I guess I didn't pass the phone interview with Alaska. I didn't pass the one-on-one -on -one interview because that one question. I mean, I really wanted to work for Alaska at the time, but I also wanted to work for the company that I work for now. And you know, when I when I got that rejection from Alaska after a one-on-one -on -one interview, I just had so much peace. God gave me so much peace. Um, so I knew, you know, this is this is not the airline I'm supposed to work for. If you were interested in working for an airline, not limited to just customer service or flight attendant or being a captain. There are other options, other career paths that you can do. You can be a ramp agent uh, doing all the cargo and all the bags, or you can be a technician. You can be a zone controller, which overlooks the entire operation. You can be so many things. You can go into corporate. There's so much growth opportunities in airlines, it's ridiculous. So if you're interested in working for an airline, apply, go ahead, do it. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You get a rejection letter or you get a rejection email and. <laughs> In today's time and age, you get a rejection email. So don't give up. Keep applying. Keep trying. Because the airline that is lucky to have you will hire you. Hopefully I answered your questions, Cam and Dre. I tried to do it as best as I can. Um, I Yeah, I tried. I really did try. I, I literally have a notebook <laughs> that I wrote down. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my very, very best to answer them. So if you liked today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like to see more videos from me, click that subscribe button. But other than that, I will see you the next time, hopefully sometime this week. Alrighty, have a great day. Bye.